Hello and welcome to another TV Central podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. Nice to be with you at whatever time of the day you may be listening to this podcast. One of the most anticipated Australian dramas, The Slap, is about to hit our screens with episode one set to premiere on Thursday, October the 6th at 8.30pm on ABC One. Jonathan LaPaglia, Melissa George and Alex Dimitriadis head an all-star stellar cast. Joining me now is Blake Davis, who plays an interesting role in The Slap. He stars as Richie. Now, I say interesting because at first it appears that he plays a smaller side character in the series, but as the show builds, his character becomes the central and integral key in bringing things to a head. Blake, thanks for joining me here at TV Central. Oh, thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, well, I suppose it would be important first up to, to at least set the scene for this series for people that don't know. Tell us about the central storyline of The Slap. What, what is the premise? Um, well, basically, it's about a young boy at a, um, you know, a, a barbecue who, who gets slapped by someone else's, someone else's child's parents and um, it's just repercussions and how you know, each um, character's you know, situation was involved with that and, and what they think it's right, if they think it's wrong kind of thing. I don't think there's any, you know, real um, answer, but I think it's for the viewers to decide, you know, if they think it's okay or they think it's not okay to hit the child. And definitely my character, Richie, he, um, he's into, he doesn't know, he's just very confused and he doesn't know what to, what to decide. I mean, he kind of thinks it's his, you know, his fault because he was in charge of the, the cricket game that led to the slap. Well, um, also interestingly, each episode is told from the perspective of a different family member. Um, episode one centers around the 40th birthday boy, Hector, uh, played by Jonathan LaPaglia. Tell us um, how this type of storytelling adds to the narrative of the story. Um, well, I think, you know, because um, Jonathan's character appears in every, you know, every eight episodes, he's, I think, the only character that appears in everyone's episode, um, it is basically about you know, if he, because it was his birthday, he, he kind of thinks, you know, he should be in charge and he should have taken control of the, you know, the whole thing, but uh, he has his own issues to deal with and, um, you know, everyone else ends up getting involved in situations they shouldn't be involved in, but, no, I think he, he handles it the best way he possibly could. Mm. Well, I've watched um, episode one and two and, and really felt connected to the characters. I, I, I've put it down to the fact that this show doesn't bring out all the bells and whistles. It just sticks to good old-fashioned storytelling. It's real and emotive and finds its connection through using, I guess, everyday middle-class characters who go through everything we do in, in normal life, um, cry, laugh, be involved in family drama. I mean, why do you believe this show will, will resonate with its audience? Um, well, it's interesting because I think a, a lot of different people will watch the show. I mean, I've spoken to my, my family and friends and they say, oh, what are you working on now, Blake? And I'll say The Slap and they go, oh, I love that show. And they know it straight away. Well, they, they love the book. They, they know the book straight away. But it's interesting because I've, I've been to a lot of my cousins as well that are around my age and, and they've watched it as well. And I just find it interesting speaking to different people and, you know, all different types of people watch it. And I, I kind of thought it was more of a family show, but... um. So a lot of young guys watch it as well, and I think I, I think they'll love the fact that they, you know, they love to hate everyone. In at one stage, you know, every character would get slapped in the book at some some way or another, but um, they all have a redeeming quality, which is which is pretty interesting. And I think that's why you know people would love to watch it and have their own opinion on it, and and then you know by episode five they've changed that opinion, and then by episode eight it's back to the way it was. So I know I think I think it's, it plays with your mind a bit, and I think that's what Christoph. The writer loves to um, loves to get people to do. Well, let's move to to your character now, Richie. You, you did mention a, a few things about him at the start. To tell us uh, more about Richie. Uh, well, he's Connie's best friend, you know, from school, and um, you know he does love her, and he kind of you know does look out for her, and and he also you know he's a loving, caring person, and um, he loves his mum, even though. He, at the stage he's growing up at the moment, he's becoming more of a teenager kind of thing. He doesn't, he's not too sure about himself too much, and he, he has a little bit of arguments with his mum, as you know most teenage boys do. But um, oh, he's 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 trying to find him, find himself in the world, and he finds that really hard to um, really hard to do. But yeah, he kind of gets a bit annoyed at Connie at some times and, and whatnot. Well, I mentioned at the start, um, at the opening, that your character plays a smaller role, I suppose, in the first episode, but it does build and Richie becomes a, or even the central character in the end. Without, 
I'm just wondering, without giving too much away, tell us about your character's journey. Um, well, I think when he starts out, you know, he he doesn't know any of the any of the main characters. Connie brings it, drags him along to this barbecue, and um, you know, he loves he loves the whole atmosphere. He loves the whole party kind of thing. He loves meeting new people, and um, he, he kind of gets involved a lot more with um, Hugo, the little boy, and. Um, he babysits him with Connie, and you know, loves um, just loves the whole whole meeting new people kind of thing. He, he wants he wants he he would love to be Connie because he he idolizes Connie and he thinks Connie's got everything. And and um, by the end of it, he kind of gets dragged into this whole you know roll in a barrel rolling down a hill. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And and by episode eight, I think that's the episode he just breaks. And, you know, he can't handle he can't handle what the, the build up is. You know. The, bottle just the lid pops off the bottle and everything just explodes for him but, um no i i think you know richie by the end of it realizes who his true values are and who his true friends are yeah well look forward to that um uh, yeah it, i guess it, it is hard to give it you know giving too much away because i mean all of that happens right towards the end well let's talk about um you for a moment um you've appeared in in previous shows before but i guess your breakthrough performance was entangled. To tell us about that experience. Uh, that was uh, about uh, three years and yeah, three years ago now. And um, no, I was very, very blessed and very you know humble that I was got that I, that I got that show. You know, I felt so lucky to work with such amazing writers and directors and and producers and and it's such an ensemble cast in that show as, as well as the slap. You know, I've had a lot of you know good quality shows and good quality um, actors and actresses that I've worked with that I felt so blessed and lucky to work with. Um, but no, doing, this, doing Tangle, I'm sure, has led me to you know, better things and I've got much more better auditions and, and, um, and whatnot. But we just finished third series about oh, eight weeks ago now. Yep. And, um, I think that comes out next year in February sometime. But hopefully we go to a fourth series, but you know, who knows. Yeah, it'd be great. Um, I gather acting was in it was in your blood from a young age because I mean after high school you you did study um, drama at the Screen Actors Studio and and at the Australian Film and Television Academy I believe. So so to tell us about your your childhood days before things became more official later. Um, well, I always you know I think since year seven I was always involved in you know school productions and and Rocker Stedfords and jumping up on the stage and doing different things. Different hmm. things. And during school, I always, you know, did a little bit of out-of-school stuff and in school, kind of. It got a bit confusing, kind of, thing because I was doing two projects at once. But I kind of liked the pressure, and I kind of liked doing, you know, a lot of things at once. And I don't know, I think when I just left school, I kind of, because you know, I left school in year 10 to do Tangle Series 1 and a few other shows, and, and I was, I, was, I wouldn't say I was happy to leave school, but I much preferred to be out of school and working than, you know, staying in school. But I kind of, I keep in touch with a lot of my mates from school and a lot of them still do, you know, acting somewhere else. That I, you know, cool. A lot, them, a lot of them are going to, you know, they want to try for NIDA and stuff. But And I've always thought about trying for that, but at the moment, which has probably been good, I haven't had time to do any of that, you know, mm-hmm. move away and do a course. But. Yeah, well, you, you have been really lucky with it, you said before, with the quality of shows you've got. You've um a- appeared in shows like uh, Blue Healers and uh, Bed of Roses, Rush. Were those good stepping stones and learning curves for you? Yes. They, they, um, it was actually funny that I worked in Rush with Catherine McClements. And, <laughs> you know, weeks later I had an audition for Tangle and um, she ended up playing my mum in Tangle for three, for three series. So, no, but I remember going for the audition for those guest roles and I was very, like, you know, Blue Healers was my first one. I was so nervous and I just... I, I didn't know what to expect because it was the first job I had ever done, which was in Year 7, when I was in Year 7, when I was about 13. But um, I was just blown away by the whole atmosphere. And I knew, you know, that day when I left set, thinking, wow, I really wish I could be a lead role like one of these guys. And, and mm-hmm. kind of, it's kind of good, you know, it's kind of come at a good stage for me that I can, you know, play um, three series and Tangle and, and The Slap. And hopefully, you know, now I get a film or, you know, I, I think it's going to be hard to find something that's, you know, better than Tangle and better than Slap. It's such a big, you know, high-profile show and high-caliber shows that I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't, you know, find something of equal value. But um, I'm sure something will come along. 
Um, you've mentioned like that you've worked with really the cream of Australian drama talent. Catherine McClements is, is obviously a class act, and you've worked with Cat Stewart, um, Melissa George, Alex Mitriadis, John Lampalia. What, what what have you learned from these guys? Well, there was one day on um, on um, set on the slap. Melissa comes up to me and she goes, "You know, like that was really good. You know, I, I really felt that." And I remember thinking, "Wow." I feel so excited, and I feel so. I've just impressed Melissa George, you know, because my family used to love Home and Away, and they always used to watch you know, Home and Away, and they always used to say, "Oh, you know, one day you'll be on Home and Away," or whatnot. But to actually be working with someone like Melissa is amazing, and and they're all they're all very nice people, and very they're not you know they're not selfish kind of thing. They're very caring, and I also remember in Tangle, Catherine McClemens would come up and be like, all right, this is our one, we'll do this one, this is our take, Blake. And we'll, I'll be like, all right. And she would kind of give me that boost of energy and we'd do it, and I'd be like, cut, print, we got it. <laughs> and um, I know they're very, they're very nice and very caring and very loving towards me. You know? Any, any uh, stories to, to sort of drop any funny stories that have happened or anything like that? Um, well, for the audition for The Slap, my second recall audition, Sophie Lowe, who plays Connie in the slap, was in the room and we actually auditioned together. Yeah. And um, I remember when she walked in, she just started laughing. I remember thinking to myself, I bet you she'll get the role of Connie. I bet you she looks so much and she's laughing, she's giggling like Connie. I bet you she'll get it. And she ended up getting it and I think to myself, oh, she got it. Now I'm going to have to try and get it because we worked together, we did the same audition. Now I've got to do is get it. And to this day, she still won't tell me what she was laughing about. I've still got to ask her. <laughs> but I'm um, very cheeky, but she's very nice. I'm going to put you on the, the spot with this one. I've, I mean, I've asked how you've perceived others, and um, but but I'm just wondering how you think people perceive you. I mean, if I ask Catherine McClements or, or uh, Wendy Hughes, who you worked with, or, or one of the sl- SLAP cast members, what it's like working with you, wh- what, what do you think they'd say? Um, well, I don't know. Are you are you quiet or dramatic or sort of hard-working or really... I think, def- I think what I would say is maybe, I don't know, I would like them to say it, but I think I also am very <laughs> focused kind of thing, you know, when I, when there's time for mucking around and there's time for, you know, hanging out on set and stuff, but, you know, when it comes to work and when to, you know, doing the scenes, very, being very focused and trying to be in the scene, I kind of like to, you know, when they call cut, not to, you know, jump around and actually, they kind of like to stay in it because I know, you know, the next scene's coming up or we might be doing another take or a different angle kind of thing, so... I think what they might say is, you know, he's very, I wouldn't say quiet, but very, you know, keeps to himself and tries to, I think I try and stay in the character also when I'm doing the scenes. Right. I try and jump in and out, in and out kind of thing. So tell us about your um your ultimate role. What What's the dream role? Ultimate role, eh? Um, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a secret agent or a spy <laughs> or someone that they could, let's, you know, Let's do what they want and you know, get to fly around the world doing secret you know, missions and you know get to all the ladies and maybe <laughs> I could do the, maybe I could do the next 007 now. Uh, <laughs> movie, yeah. But I'd love to work with actor Leonardo DiCaprio. And, um, I know he's filming The Great Gatsby in Sydney, so maybe I could hopefully get a role in there or something. That'd be great. I love him. He's probably my top idol. Yeah, top idol. Her, him and Angelina Jolie. Oh, of course. So, um, so maybe a 007 role for you and Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio as the as the villain in there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, well, I don't think it'll be any time soon, but you never know. Hopefully, I could at least appear in it. I could be the sidekick or something. What's um What's next for you? Um, uh, I mean, you, Slaps obviously finished filming, and and so has um the the series of Tangle that you've just done. So, is there anything coming up next for you? Um, I think at the moment I'm just yeah being a, you know being a, an actor waiting by the phone waiting for the next I've look, I've had a few auditions and you know my agents talking to me about you know a few different things but I don't know I'm just waiting around trying trying different things definitely you know been seeing my friends a lot because I've been working for the last you know year and a half two years I've kind of enjoyed this you know this four week five week break of just relaxing but I've you know I've been doing a few little things voiceovers and a few um, media films with my friends and stuff. So I wouldn't say I haven't quit acting for the five weeks, but no, hmm. um, yeah, 
just relaxing at the moment, but hopefully I do a film. <laughs> now, um, when I do these podcasts, I obviously try to ask some questions that maybe haven't been asked before and go in a few different directions, but there's obviously one obvious question being with this show, So, and I'm sure you've answered it a million times, but um, with the slap, the tagline under the title is, Whose Side Are You On? So, hypothetical... You're at a family or friend's barbecue and this really, really annoying and badly behaved and possibly even violent child is slapped by a family member of yours. Let's just say it's your uncle. But the child is not your uncle's. The mother of the child is outraged. Whose side are you on? Aaron. (laughs) I don't know. I I can't, like... I think what it is is I see so many you know, negatives against it when I was doing the show and when I read the book, but also doing, you know, seeing the positives, they kind of cancel each other out. And I think, you know, as I was saying earlier, Christos loves people being really confused about it and they don't know what to pick kind of thing, you know, because people be like, oh, no, you shouldn't hit a child. But, you know, watching the show, we kind of, maybe he did deserve it. But then people be like, yeah, he did deserve it. But then he's like, you never struck a child kind of thing. But I think, I can't, I can't, can't decide. I think he was a bit young, and maybe he shouldn't have been struck. But yeah, no, nah, I just I, I can't decide yet. Maybe I'll watch the show. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it is a hard one, and, and I'm glad I'm I'm asking the questions, not having to answer them. But um, as the story unfolds, it is it. it like I said, it's not so simple, is it? Especially when you have long-standing relationships and connections all mi- mixed in with it as well. It's it's a hard one, isn't it? And um, it, I know that my character definitely disapproves. He does not think the character, you know, Hugo should have been should have been struck because um, he thinks it's his fault. So, but me looking at myself as Blake, I kind of think hmm, maybe yes or maybe no. But I think I would pick no as well because I've played the character as well, and he's, you know, his whole mindset is on no, the child should not be struck. Mm. But I think now it's been a few weeks, and now I watch the show, and because I've forgotten a lot of things that happened, kind of thing, and now that I watch it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, oh yeah, that's right. So it's kind of, nah, it'll be fun to watch. Do you, do you, do you think there's any more emphasis on the fact that he was he was sort of slapped in the in the face? I mean, there's obviously a debate about smacking your children and stuff like that, but when people talk about sn- uh, smacking your children, I gather it's it's a smack on the bum or a smack on the hand or something like that, not usually across the face. Do you think it's the fact that it was across the face which gave it more emphasis or is it the fact that just striking any child that's not your own? Well, I think the strike on the face was, yeah, it wouldn't be as bad, you know, if it was just on the back or, or the back side. But I, but I also think, you know, if you, you know tap a little kid and, and they can see that as a slap and it's more of a I've just been hit not the painful kind of thing I mm. think it's just more of the shock being 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 hit but I think in the slap it's both because he does slap him pretty hard and also you know the kid was young he, he kind of just came out of nowhere and um, he has to deal with you know the trauma the trauma from that so, um, yeah I, I, I definitely do think that there is a big difference between being struck on the um, on the back and in the face well, with the show though, when I mean, we talked about the slap, I mean that's the I guess the major premise for the for the show. But there are some pretty juicy subplots around the the main slap storyline. I mean, tell me about some of those. I'm I'm thinking of um, perhaps Hector's fling, um, Anouk being pregnant, and stuff like that. Tell us about some of the other sort of subplots. Um, oh, it's a bit dangerous. That would give too much away. But um, I don't, I, I think you know. Me and, me and um, you know, uh, Sophie Lowe spoke a bit about that, and she was like, "Oh, how should I, how should I play about this, and how should I go about this?" And because you know she has that that small little thing with uh, you know Jonathan's character, she kind of spoke to me about, it and she goes, "Oh, Blake, this is so like you know." She was getting scared about it because she thought, you know, there's actually things like this happening with teenage girls and grown men. So she's like, "Oh, I'm really nervous, I'm really scared," and I'm like, "Oh, you'll be fine." So um, I think. I don't know, I think kind of, it is a bit weird and a bit strange, but that's kind of what, you know, people love to watch. They like to see people out of their, out of their shell and, and not in their, you know, not so comfortable, stuff like that. But, um, I don't know, if I wasn't in the show and I hadn't have read the book, I think this is one of the shows I'll definitely watch, just to see people, you know, in awkward situations and, and people twisted 
things happening in their lives and it's very, um, you know, people deciding should they change their opinions and, and whatnot. But, um, no, nah, I, I do love the show. Hey, awkward... I was going to say awkward situations. Um, your character has a has a bit of a, a, a crush on Hector. Um, <laughs> did yeah. did you uh, get any luck in that department with him? Uh, in terms of your character? Oh, not me. No, not me, and Jonathan. Nah. Um, yeah. Look, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think Richie, my character, was just you know growing up and 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 you know being a teenager trying to find find himself and you know he he was one that just cared too much about what people thought about it. He just he kind of did what he wanted to do because it, you know he felt I don't know he felt like he could kind of thing and he did he did kind of like you know Jonathan's character. But <laughs> I don't know I don't know you'll you'll have to watch and see what happens between Richie and Hector. <laughs> All right. Um. Finally, um. There are a number of Australian dramas on on television right now. In fact, um. You'll be teaming up with one on Thursday night on ABC Crownies. Um. So so what's the point of difference? Um. With the slap. Uh. What what will the slap bring? And and why should a curious viewer that sort of heard about the slap? Um. Why should they give the show a go? Um. I think it's actually a really high quality Australian drama. And I know the ABC love it so much. And I think this is something the ABC have never done before kind of thing. And, and they've put so much effort and so much time into this. And I think it's going to be something that's, you know, never been seen on Australian ABC, at least, TV, TV you know, stations. But um, I don't know. I, a lot of people read the book and they agree with the book and they disagree with the book. But I still think, you know, you, you'd watch the show and you'll agree at some stage and you'll disagree. And people that love, you know, having a mindset saying, no, this is the way it should happen. If they watch the show, they'll end up changing their mind. So, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why you should watch the show. Awesome. Uh, Blake Davis, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me here today at TV Central. No, thanks for having me. Blake Davis stars as Richie in the new ABC One series, The Slap, which begins Thursday, October the 6th at 8.30pm. It will be replayed Friday nights on ABC Two, and uh, you can also see it through iView. I don't give too many shows five stars, but this one is definitely worth it. You can uh, see the review on TV Central, where you can also catch a promotional video for the series as well. That is all for this podcast. Thanks for listening. Until the next one, I'm Aaron Ryan for tvcentral.com.au. See you then.